Coach, thanks for joining us. Uh, everybody, if you have a question for Coach, please utilize the raise your hand feature. Robbie, we'll start with you. Uh, hey, Tim, you know, almost nothing offensively through the first five innings. Uh, so what uh, what changed? What, what did you guys start doing better after that? Well, I think, you know, Marsh, first of all, did a nice job. I mean, he, he, he mixed pitches really well. I thought he commanded the ball. He didn't walk anyone. Uh, he got to 3-2 count uh, a few times, and, and we weren't successful that way. So he won those battles. What changed was just the momentum of the game. And Jason staying over a ball and driving it the other side. And then Enrique putting down a, a good bunt. And that kind of started to shift momentum in our dugout. You could feel it. Uh, looked like it was going to crack there for a little bit. But CJ did a good job of getting up and delivering, you know, staying on a fastball. And then after that, it was some big hits. Isaiah's hit was was certainly a, a large hit at the time, too. And uh, then, uh, you know, of course, the you know, the, the, the final inning, uh, big drives up the middle of the field, Bulger and, and uh, of course, Troy. How big would it be if you can emerge as, you know, a key piece of the bullpen for the postseason? Who's this now? Sorry, Hugh. Hugh Fisher. Hugh. Well, we, we, I mean, that, that's, that's his intentions. That's our intentions. I thought he did a really nice job. I mean, he made a tough pitch on Collette. Collette fought, uh, fought it off, but the, the pitch was against Anu. I mean, that got the ball in and kind of jammed him enough to throw that ball up the middle where Parker did a good job of containing it, stepping on the bag himself and, and throwing over. So, yeah, Hughes, uh, listen, he's, he's got some good confidence right now, and uh, he's a big piece of that bullpen. Aria? Um. Hi, Tim. What did you see from Jack Leiter tonight in his last start? And is there anything else you're hoping to see from him, but, you know, going into the SEC tournament? No, not really. I just wanted to see the comeback after last week and, and see where his strength was. I thought he I thought he threw the ball well, um, you know, one oh two mistake early in the game. But outside of that, I, I thought he pitched really well. I mean, you kept a, a team down to two runs. I thought it was just a, a very good team pitching effort, but he certainly got us deep into the ball game, and that's what a starter needs to do. Um, and what does it mean for you guys to, you know, be still have the opportunity to clinch an SEC East title tomorrow? It, well, I mean, it's great. Um, you know, we don't talk about those things too often with the group, but they knew it was on the table, and but we had to do our job and uh, we had to win some games. So uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll find ourselves in a situation where if we do what we need to do, then, you know, potentially it could happen, but uh, we just got to play good baseball. Chris Lee. Hey, Tim, talk about Jack's fourth there. I think that was a 26 pitch inning, uh, had a lot of runners on, but he was able to navigate that. I think got a a strikeout on a breaking ball to end that. What did you like mm -hmm. about what he did in that inning? Because that's a spot where the game could have easily broken open and, and gotten sideways on you quickly that's there. Right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It got a little bit murky there for a time, but he, he delivered at the end. And I think, you know, the other piece of that is he bookended that inning with quick innings. So that, thankfully, because if he doesn't, you know, we, we pro probably don't get the depth out of him, Chris, because, you know, we – we want to treat him fairly in terms of pitch limit or pitch amount. Uh, but that, that was the one that, you know, potentially would have cost us, but you're right. He, he was, it was a clutch job of pitching, landing the breaking ball. There was, uh, was certainly a big moment for him and us. Robbie, back to you. Uh, yeah. Would, um, you know, since Maldonado and McElvain went tonight, but sort of shorter outings compared to some of what they've done recently, would they be available tomorrow? They would. I, I don't see any of those guys, including Murphy, Robbie, that wouldn't be available. I think everyone tomorrow is is available to pitch and wants to pitch. I mean, Matt, that's the first thing McIlvain said to me when I went out to get him. He goes, I'm ready tomorrow. And I said, well, you haven't even slept yet. So we'll, 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 we'll find that out tomorrow. But his heart's in the right place and his head's in the right place, too. And Fish certainly is. And, and, and Maldonado, I don't know what the final, what final pitch count was, but it was right 17, 18. He's fine. Andrew. Yeah, definitely. Just if you could encapsulate what, what it was like at Hawkins Field today and 
what that did for the team and the student athletes, you know, in that sixth inning push, and how did that change the narrative of the game? Well, you you never know what fans noise do, but it, it creates momentum. I mean, it certainly creates momentum for we, we haven't we haven't had this all year, so this is kind of new for us. We had a we had that feeling against Mississippi State, but it was half full, and you had most of that momentum created created right over our dugout. But yeah, I, I think once we started to move runners a little bit, the crowd got into it, and uh, there, there's certainly some people when I look up over the first base dugout that are working very hard for us. But uh, yeah, I mean, it it matters. It does. It helps. It certainly helps. Aria. Um, with Carter out, who have you seen um, stepping up on offense in his place? Well, I, I think, you, you know, the thing that changes really is, is, is probably the, the DH situation. Um, I, I, I think they've all stepped up at certain points in time. I mean, you have to look at Troy first. I mean, Troy... But, you know, Troy's now started a few games in a row and, and been pretty valuable to us. But I think when you look at that, Aria, I, I think the, the only thing that matters when Carter came out is that you can put three guys at second, short, and third, and they can keep the harmony of the team defensively. That's all that matters. And, and if we get some hitting, fine. But I think really all we want to do is hold that defense together, and they're doing the best they can, and they're making the plays they need to. I, I thought... Parker made some great chopper plays that he had to come in and get. I and mean, I thought his burst of the ball was good. Tate certainly is secure. That was a hell of a tag he made on that running play. And then uh, Jason's doing what he needs to do at third base. So I think that's the main thing. The hitting, it's, uh, that has to come from you know everyone. We're pretty, pretty balanced that way. I, as I've said before, we don't really have a, you know, a one, two, well, with the exception of Rike being one hole, we don't have a two, three, four, five, six, eight. It's just a bunch of good players that are playing their part inside of a lineup. Chris Thank Lee. you. Uh, Tim, with, with Hoover four days away, I, I don't assume that changes anything about your usage for tomorrow, knowing that you're going to play two down there. I, I guess that doesn't, that, that doesn't affect any decisions for pitching tomorrow, does it? No, I, I don't, it, it can't, we, we've got to, we got to do our job tomorrow. And then when after tomorrow, when then we'll, uh, we'll reevaluate. But I think right now, the most important thing is how we perform tomorrow and how we get ourselves in a position of success by, uh, with the pitching staff and the defense. Any more questions for coach? Great coach. Thanks for your time tonight. Yep. Thanks gang. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night.